and welcome back here is Steve from MGL. Uh, I have been asked to create a video on pipe sizing from my first pipe sizing video which mainly dealt with cold water. This new one I have been requested by a number of yourselves to make one specifically for hot water. Now using the same BSEN 806 part 3 where it's pipe sizing simple, made simple or simple methods or whatever way you want to word it. So I have created this video for you. Now please remember, if you do enjoy this video and you find it very useful, please remember to hit that like button. Also, leave a comment if you have any questions and why not help support the channel by hitting that subscribe button. So, what I have done, I have created this video. As I say, after a number of you requested that you, know, you had one specifically for hot water, specifically covering combination boilers or unvented hot water cylinders. But this also can apply to uh, thermal store cylinders as they are all mains fed systems. Don't worry if you don't know what an unvented cylinder or thermal store cylinder is at the moment. It will be covered in later lessons. We are going to be working to the same standards where we are using three meters per second as our fluid times. And we are still going to be using the loading units and everything from BSEN 806. If you have not watched the previous video on cold water pipe sizing, I do suggest that you watch that first before moving on to this video. There is a link to this at the top right hand corner, fingers crossed, hopefully there now. So please watch that one first before jumping on to this one, because this is like a shortened version. And if you don't know where I'm at or what I'm talking about, it could be very confusing. So. Pipe sizing. Remember, when we do the pipe sizing, we've got to draw out our systems, we've got to break it into its various sections, and then we've got to label it from the furthest points and work our way back. Then we add our letters for each one of these sections as we're going backwards, and then we design our system. So, here's an example for us now. As you can see here, I've drawn a nice simple line diagram. We've got the WC, a bath and a basin on the second uh, first floor, sorry. And then we've got a combi boiler, a sink and a w uh, washing machine. I'll get there eventually. Now, combi, I have put where this would normally be located in the kitchen, most of the installations I have completed myself. But they could go elsewhere, they could go upstairs in this corner and things like that. Typically, when I'm designing it, Combis normally go on the downstairs location, preferably near the uh, kitchen and in the middle of the two, either the bathroom and the uh, kitchen. So the, there is limited pipe runs. So we don't get what's known as a dead leg, excessive dead legs where the water takes forever to get hot. If you were talking about a uh, unvented cylinder or a thermal store, they would be going in the upstairs, maybe in the old airing cupboard out of the way. So you would put that up in the corner there. So let's start off. We're going to split our pipework into sections, typically like we did the last time. So we'll be going from the furthest point there. So the WC section is A, bath is and WC is B. Base and bath and WC would be C, and that goes all the way down to the T down here. Then we go to the combi D, sink E, washing machine F. Then we've got all the sections from the bottom of that T, so that becomes G, and then H. Again, I'm not going to cover H, that would be a different set of pipework, but if you watched the previous video, you will already know how to size up for H. So, loading units. As I say, we're using the same ones out of BSEN 806 Part 3, Pipe Sizing Made Simple. So, what we have in this property is a wash hand basin and a WC. That gives us a, to a loading unit per appliance of one. We also have a kitchen sink and a washing machine. These all have a loading unit of two. And then last appliance that we have on this system is a domestic bath. You will see on here though, there is no pot combi. We've got to figure that one out separately. So we've got the bath that becomes four loading units. Right, now we've got these loading units, we can add them to our plan. So, WC, one loading unit. Bath, four loading units. Basin, one loading unit. Combi, as I say, we can't put on yet. Sink, two loading units. Washing machine, two loading units. So, 
now we've done all that, we can now work out the loading units for the hot water. So we go to my little table. This is one I've just made up. As you can see, I've already put all the loading units for the cold run in here. I haven't put the combi down here because we need to work it out. So we'll start off with this box here. Because this is a WC, they don't tend to have hot water. Even if you have a Japanese style B-Day type toilet, they still do not use hot water. So we would put a big fat zero in there. Baths, of course, they have hot water or else we get a very cold bath. So that again would be a loading units of four because these loading units are for each tap. So we've got four for the cold and four for the hot. Now we go to the basin. Yes, that has hot water as well. Nothing worse than shaving in cold water. Done that too many times. But so loading units of one. Kitchen sink. Again, we need hot water to do our washing up, uh, cleaning our veg, food, things like that. So again, that would have hot water. Most washing machines these days have cold feed only. There are some old uh, washing machines out there that have hot water. And from what I have read, some of the newer a-rated appliances are going to be having back the hot water connection so we don't have to use more electricity to heat water that's already been heated so it may be coming back but, but this exercise we are going to say no it does not have a hot water connection so we add all them up that gives me a grand total of seven so we put the seven now on the combi because that's how many loading units that combi must produce for hot water so just now we can work out the total requirements for our cold water system. So we just again add all them up. That gives us a grand total of seven. So now we can put this on our little plan. So we put the seven down there. So now we've got to add up our total loading unit. So A, section A will have one loading unit. Section B will have five because that is the bath and the WC. Section C will be the basin, the bath and the WC. So that is six. Then section D would be seven. Section E, sink and combi, that gives me nine. Then section F is the washing machine, the sink and the combi, so that's gonna give me 11. And G will have them all on there. So that is where we put the 17. So we've now done all that. We are now ready to move on to the next stage. So when we're moving on to this, we're gonna to have to go to, again, British Standard BSE and 806. We'll go straight to table three. There are eight tables, I think, in this document, but I'm only covering this one for this time. Again, if you haven't watched the previous video, I do suggest you watch that one now. Right, okay, so we get the table up. Here is our table. It's nice and straightforward. We've got our maximum loading units. So these are the loading units we use per section. The highest value, again, is on here. So we go along this. So one given appliance so for an example a bath has four loading units there is the bath but we couldn't use it for any one of these pipe works before that point there but we can use it here definitely use it here and we can definitely have it here then we have the diameter of our pipe works that we would use that's the inner diameter there and then the maximum lengths of pipe runs that we would use as you can see though the bigger the pipe the less restrictions there are on the maximum lengths. But the smaller the pipes, we are restricted to the amount of lengths that we can have. So, moving on. So if we go here, we've got a WC. It has one loading unit, so we can put that on there. There is no maximum because you can't really go much more above one anyway. So we go straight down to the size of the pipe. That is 12 mil. Now, 12 mil is their minimum recommendation. With here in the UK, we would be using 15 mil because 12 mil is quite expensive. So we would go straight to 15 mil. So technically speaking, we're giving oversized pipe work, which is much better. So as I say, typically this is what we do. So we can now put that on our table. Section A would be 12 mil. Job done. Now we go to section B, which is five loading units. So we can go on here again. We get the five loading units. Job's done. Now, if we go along the line, four's there. We, that's more than four, so we have to go to six, like so. We look for the maximum loading unit. So we said before, the bath is a four. So we're within our tolerance on that one. So we can use technically 50 mil pipe for that bath. Now, baths typically have 22 mil pipe work 
supplied to them. Because they are a larger appliance, they can average hold 100 litres of water or more, depending on the size of bath you've got. Um, so typically we'd run our pipe work in 22. I always run all my pipe work from wherever it comes from. So if it was coming from the mains, I would run it all the way from the mains up to the bath to cold feed in 22 mil pipe. It's something I've learned throughout the years. If I use 15 mil, it causes problems. So I would run it in 22, but according to this pipe size, it made simple. We can use 15 mil pipe. As I say, in the UK, I would normally bump it up to 22. So we'll put the 15 mil pipe on here. Job's good. So now we've got section C, which is the basin. As you can see, that's six. That's still within our loading units tolerance. So we can still use that part of the table. We're still on four loading units for the bath, so we're still safe. So we'll still be using 15 mil pipe. As I've said previously though, I wouldn't be doing that. I would be using 22 mil pipe. So we'll put that in here. So as you can see from this point, this T here, I would be using 22 mil pipe all the way to the bath T, then up to the bath in 22. I would reduce down for section A in 15, and then where the basin T is, I would T off in that and reduce the pipe work down to 15 as well. That way I have protected my whole system with its flow rates for the upstairs. There would should be no problems. So moving on. So now we got the combi. Now the combi is a little bit of a bit of a little bit of a bugger. So, combi needs seven loading units. So normally, yeah, we'd go along the table, it's more than six, so the next one is 10, but our maximum value is five. So technically speaking, we cannot use that one. So we would have to move to the next one up. Luckily, the maximum height, the highest valued appliance we can have on there is eight, so we're, we're one under our loading unit, so that gives us 20 loading units. So because we've got the 20 loading units, we go straight to 22 mil pipe. Now you can start to see where I'm going with my pipe sizing. So we'll put that in there. We go 22 mil pipe. So that's it, 22 mil pipe there. So if I was doing my pipe work, that's 22. That would be 22 as well because we can't drop down. So section E could not suddenly go, right, I only want 15 mil pipe for that, so we wouldn't drop down. We can only go bigger. It's when we go along the run, so if we go to F and that starts at 22, then we go to E and that goes to 15, then we go to D, that goes to 12. We can never go down when going backwards. So 22 mil technically would be going all the way along this section. And I'll prove it to you anyway, because we'll go through this bit. It's all going to work out the same anyway because we've got 20 loading units to play with. So it's all going to be 22 mil. So nine loading units done there. We've got the maximum, which is our combi. So again, we'd use 22 mil pipe. We pop that in there like so. Then we'll add the washing machine. We're still, if I remember correctly, yeah, we're still under the loading unit. So that's 11. We've still got the maximum of seven, so, but we're still under that by one, so we can still use the 22 mil pipe. Nice and straightforward. So all that is 22 mil pipe. Again though, for the washing machine, we would tee off in 15 mil pipe to that. The kitchen sink, again, we would tee off to that in 15 mil as well. It's perfectly fine. But the key thing there is making sure that combi has plenty of flow. Now, for the last bit, G, there's 17 loading units. Again, we're already still on the 20, so we're well with underneath that, so we're good. We've only got the maximum of seven for the combi. We can allow eight for that one. So again, we still go 22 mil pipes. So 17, pipe section G, 22 mil pipe. That will give us the perfect pipe sizing for this property. Now, if I did it my way, as I say, that'd be 22 mil up to that point there. We have technically oversized this. This system will work perfectly for the cold side of things. All right. So we've tied it all up. We've worked it all out. We've done all our sums. If it's done correctly, all the pressures should be exactly the same. So now when you use your upstairs basin tap and someone turns on the kitchen tap, you shouldn't have any fluctuations. You might have a little fluctuation in the pressures, 
but you should still get plenty of flow. But however, if you've done that and someone opens a kitchen sink downstairs and the water and the basin slows down or stops, that is a sign that your pipe work is undersized. And unfortunately, it's a very common thing in modern houses these days. It's better to be oversized than undersized. And that's how we do it. Right, okay, so that's the cold complete. Why don't we try now and have a look at this hot side? Now, the hot side is fairly straightforward. We start off with the combi instead of the main stop tap, we start with the combi. We then go to the furthest point, which would be the basin, then it would be the bath, and then it would be the kitchen sink. And we label them A, B, C. Then we need our loading units, which we already know, of the basin is one loading unit, a bath is four, and the, kit, the sink is two. And once we put them all in there, we go back to our loading units, uh, copper pipe sizing chart, and we find out what size pipe work we need. So, once we've done all that, you can see on here, we've lost me pointing now, uh, the basin would be starting off at 12. Again, I would have been installing that in 15, so now I'm already oversized. The bath, again, that says it's all right in 15. I would have come off that in 22. Up to the bath, reduced down here for section A in 15. And then on this T here, it says section C is 18 when I did all the sums. Again, I would have put it up to 22 because 18 mil pipe is very expensive, so I wouldn't be using it. But where I tee off for the sink, I'd be doing it in 15 mil pipe. Now, with most modern combis these days, they're all condensing, they've all been sized correctly, and all combi inlets are now normally 22 mil for their cold feed and 22 mil for their hot feed coming off. So they've already done all this for you. You've just got to do the pipe work. But if you size it correctly and do it correctly, you won't again have any problems. Because in theory, Someone could be, as I say, using the basin with hot water. Someone could open the kitchen sink with hot water. You will get a little pressure drop because we've got a little bit of resistance inside the combi itself, but they should technically both keep running and you should be able to use two at the same time. Again, unfortunately, with most houses that I've been into, a combi cannot do the sink and a basin at the same time. It's one or the other. It's because it's been poorly designed, but again, I can't do anything about that. It's just things I suggest as I go along. Now, when it comes to thermal store cylinders or on vented cylinders, we do exactly the same as a combi. So we'll start off at the cylinder. That is our main, so to speak. We go to the furthest appliance, we break it into sections, and we work out the pipe sizing going back like we did previously. It's very, very simple. I hope this covered and hopefully improves your understandings and answers all the questions that people have been asking me online. And I think this is a lot better than me just trying to type it all out because I don't know if most of you know, but I am dyslexic. So sometimes typing, very hard work, but I get there and I do use various spell checks. So hopefully you should have gained now an understanding of copper pipe sizing, and plastic pipe sizing because you can use the same techniques for combis and unvented cylinders. I hope it covered all the answer questions that you had. Now, why not try it in yours and see how you get on? See if your pipe works undersized. At the moment, I'm at a property that I'm renting and I already know my pipe works undersized for here, but I am not going to upgrade it because, as I say, I'm renting it. Now, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will answer them as soon as I can. I am also still working, so bear with me. I'm not ignoring you. It's just I have been busy and I'm usually marking someone's, uh, one of my students' work and I've got quite a lot of work coming up soon. So if you found this video very helpful, again, please drop a like, leave a comment and even hit that subscribe button and help support the channel. And I will catch you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.